I'm going to Luke chapter 4. Let me say also, I should have announced this. Uh, I did have the pastor from the revival call me. Uh, there's been a uh, tragic accident with his mother, and she has uh, broken her neck. And uh, there are some difficulties in the church. And so I will not be gone next week. I will be here. They are getting another date set for the revival. And uh, they said, Preacher, we don't want to cancel it. We just need to move it up a little bit. And so I've been preaching there for seven years, I believe, eight years in revival. And uh, they want us to come, but uh, please remember Brother Brewer's mother. Uh, she's up in age, and I tell you, you got to be careful when you get a little older, amen. you got to watch where you're going, watch, you, watch what's in your path. Be careful. It doesn't take a second to break a hip or to break a neck. And, uh, and unfortunately, she broke her neck on both sides. And... Uh, there's issues with people in the church that are sick, and so he said. He said, "I just he just called me, and said, uh, preacher, I want you to come, but I want to I want to schedule another day. So we'll be here next Sunday, and uh, looking forward to be here. If you have your Bible, Luke chapter Luke chapter four, Luke four, and uh, as we're turning there, I want to remind you, don't forget now. Uh, tonight we'll be back in the life of David, uh, preaching, delving in the life of David. I love the life of David. Amen." And I learned much through it. But in Luke chapter 4, we've been preaching in the miracles of Christ. And I want to continue to do that this morning. Luke chapter 4, and we'll start our reading in verse 40. And then I want you to find Mark 1, okay? Luke 4, verse 40, and uh, then find Mark chapter 1. Same story. Let me up, update you just a few minutes while you're turning. There at Simon's house. Now, this is not Peter, Simon Peter. Uh, so, but I want you to notice here, there's a miracle that's going to take place. One man, and Brother Tom Hayes made this statement, will point out that he come to Simon's door, amen. And there were many people that come to the door of Simon and met the door of heaven, amen. And so that's what we're going to look at this morning. Luke chapter 4, verse 40. Now when the sun was setting... All they that had any sick with, with divers' diseases brought them unto him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And devils also came out of many, crying out and saying, Thou art Christ, the Son of God. And he, rebuking them, suffered them not to speak, for they knew that it was Christ. And when it was day, he departed and went into a desert place, and the people sought him and came unto him and stayed him that he should not depart from them. Mark chapter 1, quickly. Mark chapter 1, look in verse 33. Mark chapter 1. And uh, I was turning there and lost my place. Mark chapter 1, verse 33. And all the city was gathered together at the door. That's what he was talking about, at the door of Simon. I mean, you got to, hey, that must have been a popular fellow is all I've got to say is if, uh, if everybody, the whole city come to his door, he had to be popular. And uh, when you love God, friend, uh, people will love you. Amen? Isn't it good to be around people who love God? Well, this man loved the Lord. And everybody, the entire city met at his door. Notice verse 33. And all the city was gathered together at the door. And he beheld many that were sick of divers' diseases, and cast out many devils, and suffered not the devils to speak, because they knew him. I want to preach to you on this miracle at the setting of the sun. Did you notice that? The Bible uses the phrase there, at the setting of the sun. Father... We love you today. We ask you now for your goodness in our lives. We thank you, Lord, for your uh, great ability, Lord, to uh, touch our lives. And uh, I'd be honest with you, we're in a need of your touch this day in our church, in our country, in our community. And it's evident that without you, we can do nothing. And uh, Lord, uh, but with you, all things are possible, Lord, uh, through your will. And we realize that if anything is uh, beneficial or anything's done uh, that's providential, uh, Lord, that's profitable to your people, it'll be because of you. Help us now as we seek to preach the unsearchable riches of Christ. I promise you, 
We'll love you for it. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know about you, but normally this time of year, I work, uh, I work late into the evening. And uh, I look forward to the fall coming because when the fall comes, it gets darker sooner. Amen. Uh, but when you're in the home improvement business, sometimes you'll work till the, till the sun goes down. Well, uh, the Lord, uh, you notice his work never stopped just about. Here the Bible pushes the phrase, the sun was setting. In other words, it was time for people to go home and relax and get, and get a, 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 some relaxation, let their body reheal. But here the Lord's been, been ministering all day. And the, the sun begins to set, and when the, when the sun goes down, he's still doing God's will, his Father's will. And he's here at Simon's house, and I want to point out a few things about uh, this miracle. Uh, when the sun went down, the Lord's there at the door, and the entire community, we've read it, have come because there's people who are sick. And uh, I'm led to believe some of these people had Alzheimer's, some of them had dementia. Uh, these people were extremely sick, divers' diseases is what he said. And when they come to the door of Simon, the Lord touched, the Bible says, every one of them. He healed every one of them. He didn't turn none of them away. All that were there, he healed them. I want to draw a few thoughts from there. First of all, I want you to notice this. Christ healed with what I want to call no restrictions. Uh, for example, when these people come to the Lord, uh, they didn't have to do things a certain way. They didn't have to cross every T and dot every I for them to get healed. There was no restrictions on uh, or, or conditions, if you will, for them to be healed. They came to the Lord as they are. Let me tell you something. There's nobody in here that's got anything that's impressive to the Lord. Amen. We ought to come to God the way we are. And did you know what? If you really want to know who we are and what we're about, we're a needy people. Amen. We're in need of God's blessing. We're in need of God's love in our life. And we need God, Job said, more than the uh, breath of life. The Word of God, the necessity of the Bible is more important than the very air that you and I breathe. And until we see uh, how that God will accept us, hey look, God's not going to love you no more if you dress up real nice and change all your habits and turn over a new leaf and just try to start change. Let me tell you something, by the way, you're not going to live for God without God. You'll fail. If you try to start doing right tomorrow and just, I'm going to do right, I'm going to make every church service, those are good intentions, but you and I need the Spirit of Almighty God to do something in our life. There's no restrictions here. What I mean is this, God only expects you to come to Him. As you are, the songwriter said, just as I am. O Lamb of God, I come. How long has it been since you've crunched in around and got around the feet of the Son of God in reverence and love? You've been around Him for a little while. You need a miracle in your life. Let me tell you something. These people needed a miracle. And they came to the Lord just as they did. They didn't come out there telling about how much money they had or how much they could do to help the ministry of God. They didn't, tell, they didn't try to send word to Simon's home. Hey, we got a big family here. We, can, uh, we, got, we got many carpenters and many brick masons in this family. We can do much for the work of God if he'll just heal. Uh-uh. No, there was no restrictions. There was no conditions. The Lord didn't put on them uh, something that they wasn't capable of doing. They came just as they are. How long has it been since you've come and you've knelt at the feet of the God of heaven with a desperate need? You've got a need in your life. Some of us need miracles. God's still in the miracle working business. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think according to the power that works in Him. God wants to do something in your life today. And I want to, I want to, I want to remind you of something. There's no restrictions. You come to God as you are. Don't come trying to impress the Lord because I promise you, you won't impress Him. How are you going to impress somebody that stung, slung the stars out? Amen. How would we ever impress anybody that every morning tells the sun when to rise? How would we ever impress anybody at all? At night time, when it comes time, he that never sleeps nor slumber, the word of God says, 
you're going to go to sleep here in a little while. The Lord will give you some sleep and me some sleep. And God's going to command the moon and the moon's going to go in its place right at time while he looks down upon you and I. How would you ever impress someone of that nature? You can't do it. you got to come as you are. These people came just the way they were. Some of them were extremely sick. Some of them were physically overwhelmed. Some of them were mentally exhausted. Some of them were, they, they, they had many needs in their life. And the Lord said, there's no restrictions. You just come on. Now look, when word spread like that, the whole city showed up at the door of Simon to meet the door of heaven. Friend, John, the Lord Jesus said, I am the door by me. If any man enter, uh, he'll have everlasting life. How long's it been since you've been in contact with the door of heaven? One man said this, the saddest story in the word of God. Judas kissed the door of heaven and went to hell. What a thought. He comes, there's no restrictions. You come as you are, I come as I am. Uh, there wasn't no limitations that the Lord put on the people he said, notice the Bible says one word. It's a big word, all. Look in verse 40 of chapter 4 of Luke. Luke chapter 4 and verse 40. Now when the sun was setting, all they, all, there's no limitations. The Lord, uh, you ever thought about this? How can God bless me and take care of me and all these other millions of people? He don't have no problem doing it. I don't understand it, but he does, amen. God can minister to me and minister to a multitude of people. That's just, but that's, he's God. He can do that. And the Bible said all of them come. There is no limitations put on God's people when we're in need of his blessing. Why, hey, well, you know what? The problem is this. We have not because we ask not. And when we do ask, we ask amiss. James says we come and we'll ask God for something. We won't believe. We'll come down an altar publicly and ask God for something and we'll get up not believing that God's able to do it. Amen. Let me tell you something. The Lord puts his sometime, allows rather is a better word, his people to go through difficulties for a reason. Now you may be here this morning. You may be struggling financially. We've got the greatest economy and the greatest president we've ever had, by the way. Uh, I'd be finding God right now, friend. Hey, God can take a bad situation and bring good. God can bring prosperity out of stupidity. That's the only word I know to use to uh, clarify what's going on in Washington. And, and I, would, I would encourage you this morning. Uh, this is free in the message. The Lord will bless you and I, but he also respects, expects you and I to be responsible people. Amen. Be careful, be careful what you spend your money on nowadays. Hold your money. Uh, this is free. I don't know why I'm sharing it, but I'll share it. I've been here long enough. When the, when the stock, when gold goes up, the stock markets begin to freeze, and amen. And I'm telling you, there's a lot going on in America that people don't know. And sometimes God gets his people's attention through the hole that he'll place in their purse. What do you mean? Hey, look, it takes money to live. It takes money to get by. And sometimes when you and I, we're not in the center of God's will, we need God to do something, God will put his finger on your purse. Amen. What happened to, oh, how I love Jesus? I'm just telling you the truth. And you know why God will do that? Because he loves you enough and he loves me enough to, to see to that you and I will seek his will more than the breath of life. Did you know what's better than any amount of money, any job you could ever get is the will of Almighty God? See, some of you have never been in God's will. You get in God's will and you're there and you're living for God. It's the best place you could ever be in your life, the most happiest place. These people had heard about Jesus. So you got to understand, you gotta, the, the, let, let, me, let me get you to the bullseye of the text. These people had heard about a man who come in that was opening blinded eyes. He was raising the dead. He was taking adversity and heartache and sorrow out of the lives of these people. And when they heard he was at Simon's door, you know what they did? They flocked. Multitudes of them were, in the, were at the door of Simon. And the Lord says here this. He said, I'm not putting limitations on none of them. He said, there's no restrictions. There's no, nothing special that they'll have to do. And the Bible said he laid his hands on every one of them. You can look at it. It's in the text. 
Luke 40, he laid his hands, Luke 4 rather, he laid his hands on every one of them. Do you know what that tells me? God's not a respecter of persons. God's not going to do for the preacher that he wants something he won't do for the people. God, the Lord, was available for every person in that area. All they had to do is come to Christ. And when they did come to Christ, look, they had to realize there was nothing special about them, nothing unique. They were just in the right place at the right time where God's Son desired to put His hand on their life and change it. And there's no restrictions to the Lord's blessing. You don't have to try to do something to impress the Lord. Matter of fact, the humbler we are, when we get humble before God and we see our need as God sees it, you know what would be the best thing to happen to every person in this building? For just one second, if you could see your life and I could see my life as Jehovah God views your life, where we're at, where we're headed, what we're doing. He, he, he illustrates this in Revelation. They thought they were rich, and God said, you're blind, you're wretched, you're naked. You're nothing without me. We ought to put God first in every aspect of our life, every second of the day. God must be first. Matter of fact, he'll not take second seat to no one. God don't play second fiddle to nobody. He doesn't work that way. But these people came and there was no restrictions put upon them. Now look here. Here's one. I saw this. I almost started to run. There was no refusals. Amen. It wasn't like this. It wasn't like a whole city got there and Jesus said, man, I'm whooped. I, I don't know if I can touch another one. I don't know if I can do something else in another one's life. I don't know if I can. Did you realize this, that God is waiting to touch your life and my life with his blessings? God wants to do something in your life. Let me ask you this. Don't, don't raise your hand. But in the depths of your heart, I'd like for you to answer this question. When is the last time that you can literally say, you can write it down, you, a, mental, a, mental, a mental note you made it, that God himself done something for you? Not your, not your preacher, not your Sunday school teacher, not your mom, not your dad, not your children, but God done something for you. I mean, he specifically done something for you. When's it happen? Well, he wants to. God longs to. And the thought here is this. When we quit trying to impress God and we come to the Lord as we are, I'm not trying to impress you, Lord. Matter of fact, to be honest with you, uh, the more I think about myself, as the prophet Isaiah said, Woe is me. In the year King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. And above it stood the seraphims. Each one had two wings. With twain he covered his face. With twain he covered his mouth. And with twain he did fly. And one said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. I studied that post one time. And I think I, if I remember it was someone around 30 foot in diameter. And God spoke and that post moved. My, 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 the power of God Amen. that you and I have access to. But many times we won't impress God. We think that we've got to dress right. We've got to get the right haircut, Seth. We've got to straighten up, and then God will use us. Let me tell you something. That's so far from the truth. When God found me, he found a wretch, buddy, in need of everything, a needy person, in need of salvation through the blood of God's Son. I not only needed to be saved, I needed God to run my life. And I promise you this, there's a lot that I don't know, but I do know this. That's a need for every person in this building. Is God running your life? Does God dictate your life? Does the scripture, the Bible dictate your life? I can promise you this, if it does, you will profit. Now, I'm not talking about financially. God may bless you financially. 
You're not going to obey the word of God and not benefit. God is not going to do something for you and I and in vain not, not, not bless you and I. You cannot live for God and God not change your life and my life in a positive manner. The problem is this. We think that we've got to try and impress somebody. And the Lord said there's, there's no restrictions. Bring them on and there's no refusals. Did you know what? Everyone that was there, Christ waited and he healed every one of them. Every one of them. What's that mean? God doesn't love me no more than he loves you. He doesn't love you no more than he does me. He's filled with patience and long suffering and the Lord would not refuse one person. Not one. To me that's amazing. They came to him and here he was at the setting of the sun. He, he wore out. See, that's something we don't think about much. Well, God's supernatural. He is. He's 100% man and 100% God. Jesus was. He is, rather. And he was wore out. The physical being, his, his, his man, he was wore out. And yet he stood there the entire day while the sun was setting, while everyone else was sleeping, while everyone else was, was finishing the meal, getting ready to go to sleep and have relaxation, the Son of God didn't stop his work. He stood and he healed every one of them. Now here's the thought. God longs to do something in your life. If you'd just let him. If we had just let him. It's hard for the Lord to do something. He chooses rather not to do it unless you and I line up with his way. See, God is not going to give you your way and my way many times. You know why? You'll lead your life the wrong way. Somebody said, how do you know that, preacher? Look, where, just stop where you are right now. And look back, I'm doing the same thing. We've made mistakes. When we run our life, we make mistakes. We make vital mistakes. But when we let go of the reins of our life and turn them over to God and let the Bible dictate our lives, many things happen in a positive manner. I tell you this, God not only took narcotics, compulsive gambling, alcohol, I mean, I can keep going in my life. I'm telling you, God saved a wretched rebel, buddy. Saved him. And when I got saved, I started reading the Bible. And I thought the book of Job was the book of Job. Eighth grade education could barely read. God saved me. Don't tell me this Bible ain't alive. The Bible said it. Paul said it's quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of soul, the joints and the marrow, and is the discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. The Bible is quick and powerful. God said it's alive. It transformed a wretched rebel into one that would stand and preach the acceptable year of the Lord, the, the, the unsearchable riches of Christ. What happens when I yield my life to the Lord Jesus, preacher? Everything changes for the best. I won't trade one second when I was lost for one second when I was saved. He touched my life. He changed my life. And do you know what's amazing? There's men that's rougher than I, that's far off worse than I ever was when I was lost. And the Bible said he touched and healed every one of them. Watch this. With all diseases, it didn't matter whether it was AIDS, it didn't matter if it was dementia, it didn't matter what it was. He laid his hand on them. What are you trying to say, preacher? There's nothing too hard for God. The Bible said in the Old Testament, is there anything too hard for God? You say, preacher, I got problems that I don't know. <laughs> I, just, I don't even know if the Lord can help me. You don't know that. Matter of fact, you're wrong if that's how you think. God can take, I want to illustrate it real, very quickly. God can take a life and take it from a wretched, hell-bound, sinful life 
and cause in the end of the days to be a giant for God. Let me illustrate this. In the Bible, there was a man by the name of Paul, Saul of Tarsus. How many of you know who I'm talking about? He brought havoc to the church, the Bible said. He would come in, he would grab women with long hair and drag them out and beat and stone their bodies till they were dead. He killed preachers. This man was a Roman and he killed and done everything he could do to persecute God's church. That was his overall goal, to do everything to persecute God's church. In total defiance to Christ, in total defiance to Jehovah God. And one day when he least expected it, he was walking down the road by the road, by the, and he run into the Lord Jesus. See, that's something that we really needed. Just a, just a second with him could change your life for eternity. Amen. He said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Why kick us against the pricks? What do you mean there? Well, imagine taking your shoe off and getting barefooted and going out here and finding some spikes and just keep on. He said, you're hurting yourself. You're bothering yourself. You know the story, Saul gets saved. And he, he said something a little along this line. He was in, he was in, in the, the Lord's presence. The Lord looked down at him and he said, but rise and stand upon thy feet. For I have appeared unto thee and make, me a, make thee a minister. Both of these things which thou hast seen and heard. To open the blinded eyes. To set free the captives. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. I'm going to take you. You've been totally 100% against my will in rebellion and I'm going to take you and I'm going to change everything about your life. And did you know what happened? He did it. It wasn't a few weeks later and Paul goes in and now, now Paul is preaching to the very people that he persecuted. The very families that had been touched by death through the hand of this man. He had killed their family members are now listening to every word he is saying. They're getting saved, and they're realizing for the first time, this man God will use to pen a third of the New Testament. God's used him like no other man in the New Testament. And so when you first go back and see Paul, you see the horrific things he done in his life. But a second with Christ, a second for the Lord to touch him, changed his life. Now when you mention the Apostle Paul, what do you think of? The greatest missionary God ever called or used. Why? God cleaned him up. Isaiah said it this way, and made him a polished shaft. God moved and polished and worked on his life. The Lord here, there's no restrictions. You just come on, is what he was saying. Come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you a rest. So he touched every one of them. Let me give you this in closing. He didn't refuse no one. Don't sit back there at this morning when it comes time to, for, the, for the invitation, and you know the Holy Spirit of God's dealing with you, and you're thinking, God's going to refuse me because I hadn't done this or I hadn't done that. Uh -uh, that's a lie from the devil. No, 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 no. You're sitting in the house of God and an excuse comes up for you not to get something right. That is not from God, friend. I'll tell you, it's from a God, but it's not from the God. It's from a God. Last but not least, Jesus. Can you imagine this? Jesus changed the lives of this entire city. Have you ever noticed that in this text? Mark 1, Luke 4, Christ changed everyone's life that came to that door. But you wanna, I want to show you this and I'm finished. But the Lord never took recognition for it. He would never take recognition for this. He didn't want people to glorify Him. He wanted people to glorify His Father that was in heaven. 
Have you ever heard the first time, I read this the first time, the devil told the truth is in our text. Oh yeah, look at it. In Luke 4 and in Mark 1, the devil tells the truth. Now the Bible tells us he's a liar from way back then. He's the father of lies. But watch this. The devil speaks out to this crowd with a true statement about the Lord Jesus. He said, I know you. You are the Christ. Now to this lost crowd, that meant the Messiah, the one that would change. He told the truth who Jesus was. And did you know what Jesus did? He suffered him not to speak. For the first time, the devil told the truth and God rejected his testimony. It's there. What did you say all that for, preacher? God does something in your life and mine. We're to be like the Lord Jesus, not to try and accept recognition. It all goes to him. It all is to him. Did you know what? There's nothing really in my life that I've never really accomplished that God hadn't brought to pass in my life since I got, because I never really knew what it was like to live until I got saved. When I got saved, I'm telling you, you go back to people that knew me before I got saved, that know me now, different man. See, this is Bible. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things will come new. Now, what do you mean by that, preacher? Don't come in here and tell me you saved if you still live in the same life that you lived before you got saved. God does not save a man and allow him or her to stay in their sin. God saves them through the blood of Christ and brings them out. Come out from among yourselves and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. Those things we used to do, we don't want to do no more. Why? They're in defiance to Almighty God. Well, preacher, I love the Lord with all my heart. I can't find you with a search warrant on Wednesday night. I can't find you throughout the week. Y'all knew I couldn't do it, didn't you? Here it is. Write it down. You ready? I'm going to preach this until they take to the undertaker, until they take my body out of this church. Hebrews 10, 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. You need church more than you need oxygen. You need church and the Bible more than you need a job. God wants to do something in our lives if we just but let him. And do you know what he'll do? When you come to the door of heaven, friend, and he places your hand, his hand on your life, listen to me, write it down, put the date by it in your Bible. You don't have to worry about the right job, wrong moves, wrong statements. He'll take care of every bit of it. He does it all. I'm telling you. I'm telling you right now. In closing, in closing, I want to close with this illustration because it is the truth, nothing but the truth, so help me time. This has happened more than once in my life. Every now and then, God will put a hole in your purse. He will. He will. You ever seen how quick God, you can get somebody's attention with money. I'm talking extremely fast. I mean like this. You don't, you, you don't have to beg. You don't have to plead. When, when, when the money is touched, God will get your attention. Here I am running a business. You ever felt sorry for yourself? Just put your thumb in your mouth. Oh, no, 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 no. It's all me. I'm having it tough. I had one of them thumb sucking days. Actually, a thumb sucking week because I was preaching and running a business. And if one of you don't kill you, preaching will. But anyway, I wouldn't another do anything else in my life. But uh, you can get too busy with things that you put the important things on the side of you. You can. Now look, 
If a man don't eat, he ought not work, God says. If a man don't tithe, God's not going to bless him. What? Will a man rob God? How will he rob God? Through tithes and offering. Take it up with God. Malachi 3, it's in the book. People don't want to hear this kind of preaching. So I'm riding down the road. and It's getting tough. And I'm praying, talking to the Lord. And I'm saying, Lord, you know I'm up every day. I'm coming to work. I'm battling with these things. And here, things had got so tight and so bad financially, I, I honestly thought I was going to have to make an emergency phone call to make my payroll and to pay my insurance. I see call, all these bills, they add up there everywhere and, and with a company. And I'm telling you, you talking about sweating and under pressure. I mean, I was sick, buddy. And I said, Lord, what is going on here? What's wrong? You, I didn't see no sign from heaven. I didn't see no flashing sign. But the thought hit my mind, something along this line. If you'd put more time into this book preaching what I've called you to do, all this other stuff would be all right. Basically what it was. But I wasn't putting time in that. I was preaching, but I've been, I've been preaching 30 years, so I had a lot to preach. And I was complaining that it wasn't going right. I ought to have it easier, you know. I've been preaching 20-something years. I've put 20 years in this business, and I'm having to go through these tough times, these horrible times. I mean, really? It shouldn't be this way. And as I'm praying and, and, and seeking the Lord, God, I need you to do something, a verse come into my mind It's never left. See, when God puts something in your heart, it won't leave you. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. In other words, learn my book. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the seat of the scornful, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in it doth he meditate day and night. Listen, here's the promise. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Psalm 1. Well, I'm saying, Lord, I, I don't see me prospering none. Here I am fixing to fold up my business if something don't happen. But internally, I got some things right with God. I got some things in my heart about studying the Bible right with God. This was years ago. Matter of fact, it's probably about 15 years ago. And a guy called me out of, out of nowhere. I'm telling you, some of you have heard this illustration. This happened. That day, if I wouldn't have had a certain amount of money, I would have went under. I'm talking in seconds. It was bad. That day, a man called me. He said, bring your contract out here. I went out there. He said, I want to go over one more time with you. How are you going to build this garage? Now, I'm talking about in the, you know, in the good old days when the economy... See, God can change this thing tomorrow. He can. This economy, the bottom could fall out tomorrow and you could be pleading for work. And this is what it was. We had nothing coming in. I had five men at the time. God said, okay. And you know, he, it's almost like he just maybe takes a little scissor and clips your pocket and Hosea said this puts a hole in your pocket you get serious with God when finances come in I said okay Lord I can see right now you want more time in the church than you do in the business and shame on me if I don't study to show myself approved unto God and I got some things squared away and a guy called me out of nowhere it was on a Friday I had several thousand dollars worth of bills to pay you. They were canceling the insurance. Probably would lose my help. My guys knew how to pay them, but I mean, it was bad. This guy said, hey, he said, uh, we've been looking at this thing. He said, uh, come out here and tell me one more time. Bring your contract. How are you, you going to build this thing? 
And I went out there and went through a long list of how we'd build the roof system. He said, I've interviewed 12 people. He said, none of them build it that way but you. He said, but I know you know what you're doing. Water intrusion. See, God, my daddy's a carpenter. Water intrusion is what he was worried about getting to his house. And I proved to him on paper how the water, I was routing the, the water away from his home. He said, well, as far as I'm concerned, he said, I want you to go ahead and do this. And I'm thinking in my mind, glory be to God. <laughs> If I just get a check, I can get it in the bank and man, I'll date all the checks for two more days and it'll all clear and everything will be glory to God. Just Burl, let me get this check and get to the bank before five o'clock. And this guy wouldn't hush, man. He kept on. I got in there and he wanted me to talk to his wife and his wife wouldn't hush. She was long more than long tongue than he was. And not, not bad, she just wanted to know some things. That's okay when you're spending that kind of money. You get close to six digits, it's pretty serious, you know. Three digits, five digits, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And she said, uh, well, I think, I think we got one I want here. And I'm thinking, I'm looking, I ain't going to make the bank. I see. I'm not going to make the bank. And I, in my heart, I done, let, I done let it down. I mean, in my heart, I was like, man, Lord, I thought you was doing something. It was almost like I didn't say this, but it was almost like you've let me down, Lord. You know I'm, now I'm going to have to face these men. I can't pay them. And no, I'm not going to be able to make the deadline. I've done everything you want me to do. You ever heard those saying, God's not never late, but he's always on time? God killed me with a lightning bolt. If this is not the truth, nothing but the truth, so help me God. Then people put me through, I wouldn't know what, for, the, for about 45 minutes to an hour. Signed the paperwork. The man said, honey, give the man his deposit. She came out. Her face was blood red. She said, I am so embarrassed. But do you take cash? It's happened twice. I'm telling you with a not a hundred dollar bills that choke a horse. Don't you ever underestimate God. I'm walking out of there going trying to make it to the bank and I'm like in my heart I'm pleading and asking God to forgive me because I've made accusations. I thought he's let me down. He's, he's let me go under. He's let something come. You know what he did do? Everything he done. He was trying to teach me a lesson. Son, you put my business first and I'll take care of your business. Stand with me if you would. You say, preacher, how, how, how can you say that? You were working, you were going to church, you were pastoring a church. Did you know God sees your heart in every aspect? As heads are bowed and eyes are closed, she's going to come play something just for a second. We're fixing to dismiss right now. God sees every aspect of your life and mine. God knows what part of your heart he has. And I would like to ask you a question this morning. Does God have your life? Does Christ have your life entirely? Are you at the door Seeking God's blessing. Has his hand been laid upon your life? Are you in the center of God's will? To where no matter what comes, good or bad, you can say, hey, look, I've done it God's way. I'm in the will of God. I know, I know, I know I'm saved. You ought to be able to know that first. If you're not saved, you need to be saved. But if you're saved and you've invited Christ into your life, are you, have you ever come to a place you've put Christ first in every aspect of your life? God comes before, looking, y'all not want to hear this, but here's the truth. God comes before your husband or your wife. That's how it is. Take it up with God. Look in the Bible. God comes before your job. God comes before any kind of, any, that's how it is. It's in the book. He said, I'll not be a, 
I, I'm not going to play second fiddle to nobody. God's not going to be a debtor to nobody. He's je- he said, I'm a jealous God. God's jealous. He won't let you enjoy nothing else. If you put it before Him, He's not going to have it. He's not going to do it. No matter what it is. I left out one prayer in that in, that I'll share with you. I said, Lord, I was in the midst. As a matter of fact, I had been pastoring and I was in between churches. I said, God, if I never pastor again or if I lose my business, as long as you're in my will, I'm in your will and you're blessing my life, whatever comes, let it come. And that's when things really begin to change as far as learning more about the will of God, learning the blessing of God. And I'd ask you if she softly plays, how long have you knelt? How long has it been since you've knelt before him? You say, preacher, I don't have to come down there and kneel. No, you don't. You don't. But the Bible says something along this line. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may attain help and find grace in a time of need. Maybe there's a need in your life this morning. Maybe there's heartache. Maybe there's adversity. Maybe there's finances. Maybe there's physical problems. I don't know what they are. And it's none of no one else's business in this building what they are. But you're tired of it. You want to lay your head down tonight. When God calls for the moon to come up, you want to lay your head down knowing you're in God's will. Would you leave your seat right now and slip down to an old-fashioned altar? Come down here. Nobody's down here but me right now. But you'll come. You don't have to pray with me. You don't have to pray out loud. You just want to come down here and get somewhere and say, God, I want your will more than the breath of life. God, I want your ways in my life. Lord, I'm seeking you with all of my heart. When will a man find God? What the Bible says? When he searches and seeks with me with all of his heart. God, I want what you want from my life. And I'm coming down. I'm pulling the, the flag of surrender out. Today, I want to surrender my life. I want to yield my life to you and ask you to take the reins of my life.